Our first one is uh, Dr. Kiai, 15-year uh, experience with robotic-assisted coronary artery bypass grafting with postoperative angiography. Bob. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed an honor and pleasure for me to uh, continue in our, uh, um, our uh, um, program that was established uh, uh, by Dr. Alan Menkes, Dr. Douglas Boyd, were the founders of ISMICS uh, regarding uh, um, uh, our quest of uh, less invasive surgical revascularization. So in the next three minutes, I will provide you with the next, with our 15-year experience. This is my uh, disclosure. So. Uh, we all know that in the last half of, you can say, uh, quarter of the 20th century, there's been a significant paradigm shift by which uh, surgery is being performed. And the goal is to make this operation less invasive, as been said by numerous of the other authors uh, uh, during this session, to improve the acceptance of surgery, improve survival, and also quicker return to functional health. Um, the limitations have always been for cardiac surgery is we didn't have the proper tool to perform the less invasive operations. So hence, as Dr. Uh, Franz Sutter in his presentation presented, is with the robotic uh, assistance, we've been able to basically achieve that extra dexterity to be able to perform the procedures and hence allow us to do less invasive operations. Our quest goes back 15 years when we started with the first single-arm robotic system called ESOP to hold the camera, where we started our manual endoscopic IT harvest. And then subsequently, we adopted three-arm zoo system and then from the zoo system, as you can see, we had the console plus the uh, uh, surgical cart at the bedside. And then eventually in 2003, we adopted the Da Vinci system, and now we've got the SI system. If we look at how this procedure was performed, it was done all based on teamwork. This procedure is a complete team, heart team approach. Without a heart team concept, this procedure is not possible. So since 1998, 509 procedures have been performed, 18 using ESOB, 90 using Zeus, and 401 using the Da Vinci system. All except for 12 of the patients had post-operative cardiac catheterization due to uh, re uh, reasons for uh, avoiding renal insufficiency. And uh, most of the time, prior to our concept of OR, our hybrid OR, we were doing it the next day in the cath lab, but since our hybrid operating room is since 2003, we've been doing an intra-op cardiac catheterization. The main thing was patient selection to avoid complication, achieve best results. So we do preoperative CT scan on all these patients to achieve that. Um, in terms of uh, the indications, these are patients who are generally higher risk, elderly patients with all these comorbidities. And also uh, exclusion criteria were patients who have got dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, emergency cases, unstable patients, and patients who have got diffuse uh, small coronary disease. So patients were uh, looked at in terms of uh, suitability. They were excluded based on the preoperative imaging, and then they underwent endoscopic atraumatic bypass, TCAP, or an OPCAP. Uh, all these patients underwent uh, uh, the proper preoperative intrathecal block or perpetual block for uh, pain control, double lumen intrathecal intubation, defibrillator pads, warming blanket to avoid uh, hypothermia. Uh, our procedure steps was very similar. We just did a robotic harvesting of the lima, and then we opened the pericardium. If they were suitable for robotic anastomosis, we performed the robotic anastomosis. If not, then we did a thoracotomy and performed a hand-sewn anastomosis through the direct bypass. I'm going to, for the interest of time, uh, go through these, uh, not go through these particular uh, 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 videos. These are the robotic anastomosis for the interest of time. I'm just going to go right to our results. So this is uh, the small incision when we perform the anastomosis. We use the endoscopic stabilizers. Uh, so from the period of time that mentioned, 509 patients. 22% were female, mean age was 61, age varied between 32 to 89. Most were uh, patients in grade three ventricle, grade kind of a one to grade two ventricle. These were the preoperative creatinine levels. These were the CCS class level, most were CCS class three and four. And all patients, as I mentioned, underwent a graph flow study with the uh, Dopplers and all underwent uh, cardiac catheterization except for uh, the five patients intraoperatively. Patency of 98% intraoperatively was basically found, and then the postoperative complications, atrial fibrillation was only 8%, and 
Uh, we had only two deaths in primary with secondary respiratory problems, six superficial wound infections, and only four had neurological uh, symptoms were resolved in time. Average length of stay was between two to six days. Uh, since then, we have started our ultra fast track program where patients get extubated, go to their recovery unit, and are able to be discharged second and third day postoperatively. Long term follow up uh, using CT angiography at eight years mean has been 92%, uh, and these are the postoperative results. So, overall, in conclusion, uh, uh, robotic assisted coronary bypass crafting surgery is a safe procedure, reduces a significant morbidity reduction with reduction in blood loss, less transfusion early discharge from the hospital, and has got equivalent patency late in uh, follow-up conventional, conventional bypass. I think that we need to further have long-term results to further show that this is of uh, particular technology that's important and also is excellent for hybrid operations. Thank you very much.